Diablo 4 is Blizzard's fastest selling game of all time. With over 600 million copies sold, folks are fragging out with their barbarians, necromancers, druids, rogues, and sorcerers. In the fourth installment of the legendary Diablo franchise, gamers are doing similar things they've always done in Diablo. They're slaying demons, skellies, wraiths, weird dog beasts, vampires, giant spiders, wolf things, and even wasps. Despite the game's popularity, there's something that's been majorly bugging me. The story sucks zombie nuts. The plot in Diablo 4 is the perfect representation of the feckless, therapy-inspired crap plaguing popular culture right now. If I cared more, I'd look up the writers and harangue them for creating such drivel, but in my mind, it seems like they should stay anonymous, just like the blasé plotline they crapped out of their wishy-washy buttholes. We'll get into how the Diablo 4 plotline is the perfect reflection of lame, modern-day storytelling, which is in itself a reflection of our miserable, cucked culture. But first, let's give a brief history of the Diablo franchise and a summary of the convoluted Diablo 4 mess so that we can all understand what's going on. The lore of Diablo is pretty easy to understand. In the first, second, and third game of the series, the devil is trying to destroy the world. As a player, it's your job to help the angel good guys depose of the wily demon bad guys trying to ravage the earth. Demons are the bad guys. You and the angels are the good guys. You're in an epic battle to save the future of humanity from demonic destruction. The stakes couldn't be higher or clearer. Diablo 4 takes a giant dump on all that by coming up with a truly head-scratching conflict that makes no sense, has no resolution or payoff, and generally just feels really dumb when you think about it for two seconds. Here's a super short breakdown of Diablo 4. You've got two celestial beings, Lilith and Inarius. Lilith is a demon, Inarius is an angel. They're upset about the warring between heaven and hell, so they create a new world called Sanctuary. They become star-crossed lovers. Yes, Diablo writers, we also read Romeo and Juliet in high school. And their hybrid offspring eventually make humans. Well, Lilith and Inarius start fighting and break up. Their human progeny are stuck in the middle. Lilith and Inarius battle for the future of humanity. Where have I heard this one before? Oh yeah, every single one of my family's contentious Thanksgivings. If we peel back the aesthetics, the whole story of Diablo 4 is essentially a shitty metaphor for a divorcing mom and dad. It reads like the writer's therapy journal. That's because the story is a shitty therapy session for the writer. They have mommy and daddy issues, but instead of just ruining their therapist day with their mental hangups about their parents' divorce, we're forced to live through it too. Sitting through some writer's psychological hangups is skeezy enough, but the problems really start stacking up when put into context of the larger culture in general and the game specifically. First, let's look at the game. The first three Diablo games reached insane popularity because the player's place in the lore mattered. You're a good guy fighting throngs of evil bad guys. You have to save the world from their pillaging. There's a really clear purpose to what you're doing, why you're doing it, what the stakes are, and your place within the world. Diablo 4 pisses on all of that. Throughout the stupid story, you're led in different directions, wondering who's the good guy and who's the bad guy. Lilith seems pretty solid because she's trying to save humanity from being stuck in between warring heaven and earth. But then she also strings up people against a rock and makes them pour blood infinitely from their disemboweled stomach cavity? Hmm, maybe she's not so great after all. But it's so hard to tell. She has horns on her head and a great rack. Not only is my head confused, but so is my penis. Then on the other side, you have the angel Inarius. A bunch of folks in the Diablo 4 world worship him as a savior, but it turns out he was chained up in hell for a while. He's kind of pissed off about it and taking it out on the humans. Could this story be more ham-fisted? Inarius, spiteful of his chains, wants to get away from his girl's squad and get back to heaven where he grew up. Any married guy can empathize. To recap, humans are stuck between an epic battle between mommy and daddy, and both are kind of shitty in different ways. Pops is going through a midlife crisis who regrets ever shacking up with mommy, while mommy mistreats us while telling us she loves us. Neither seem to care about how their actions impact their progeny. If the veiled metaphor was any thinner, it wouldn't be a metaphor anymore. Look, I don't mind the writers working out their own shit in their content. It's totally cool and not Hemingway as the impotent ex-soldier without a schlong in the sun also rises, right? Yeah, definitely. 
But this Diablo 4 storyline is a new level of pathetic. The divorce metaphor is so palpable throughout the entire thing that I feel like I'm leaving mom's house to go to my second Christmas at Pops the whole time. The writers go through such painstaking lengths to show how like Lilith isn't totally bad and like Anarius totally isn't so good, but he's also not so bad either. But then Lilith totally isn't so good either. Everything is painted in such a hammy shades of gray that the entire story loses all meaning. I haven't even gotten into how, at one point in the story, you team up with one of the bad guys from the previous games. That's right, you go on quest with Mephisto, one of the worst of the worst bosses in previous games who is called a prime evil. You're hearing that right, the prime evil isn't even a bad guy in this idiotic story. What do words even mean? The mental gymnastics the main character must be going through to justify this decision is baffling. The fact that the writers turned a prime evil into a quasi good guy is just eye rollingly misguided. It would be like willingly going to McDonald's runs with a creepy uncle who might molest you but you let it slide because he offers you Oreo McFlurries and chicken nugget happy meals. To summarize the plot of Diablo 4, you've got a ham-fisted divorce story about being caught between mommy and daddy's baggage while your previously abusive uncle takes you on little vacations while he threatens to touch you the whole time. All of this could be potentially fine if it wasn't part of the Diablo 4 story and game. It makes no sense that the good guys are painted as bad guys and the bad guys are painted as good guys because you're only ever fighting one of the side's henchmen. You're only ever slaying the creatures of hell. You're crushing demons and zombies. You're never fighting little naked cherubs with white wings. Every action you take in the game is focused on fighting the evils of hell, but then the storyline is making you think that maybe the guys from hell might be all right? How does this make any sense? The ultimate result is the gameplay undermines the shitty therapy session style story. The stakes get completely muddled. If both Lilith and Anarius are trying to save humanity from something, themselves, and neither one is good or bad, then what are you doing in the middle of the fight anyways? There's no purpose in slaying zombies if they're just as good as the humans in the towns. If all living creatures in this world are of the offspring of these narcissistic beings, then it's sort of just murder that you're slaying the human-wolf hybrids, zombies, and possessed beasts. The story implies that there's no meaningful difference between either side, even though the gameplay has you committing genocide against one of them. A better Diablo story would have been a Minecraft style building game where you're creating your own perfect vacation resort while angels and demons fight all around you. That's basically what the story says you're doing anyway. Which brings us to how Diablo 4 is a perfect reflection of our nihilistic, boringly relativist culture. First of all, if you can't write a story where the most evil demon beings you could possibly conceive of are bad guys, then what's the point? Secondly, does adding fake complexity to the main characters contribute flavor and interest to the story, or does it just muddle everything? I think it falls squarely in the muddle territory. Playing through the campaign takes around 35 hours or so, and at the end, you're left with no payoff. After it was all done, according to the story, I hadn't accomplished anything and my character didn't go anywhere. I know we live in a postmodern world with a complete lack of meaning, but the whole point of video games is to escape that kind of nihilistic bullshit. It's the one place where you can have clear goals and aims, but then the masochistically miserable writers won't even let us have that. They want us to know that good guys aren't always good, actually, and bad guys aren't always bad guys, actually. See how enlightened the writers are? See how dumb you players are for thinking the demon lady was the bad guy? Good thing the Blizzard writers can educate us in the ways of the modern world. I don't have a problem with complex characters, but there's a, also a time and a place for them. If you want me to watch a two and a half hour indie film about an adopted cow being transported back to its home in Argentina, fine. Make the characters complex. In Diablo, there's nothing complex about the fact that angels and demons are fighting an epic battle and you want to be on the side of the good guys, which is why you slash up zombies, ghosts, demons, possessed beasts, and wraiths. They're the bad guys, you're the good guy. That's what good guys do to bad guys. What Diablo 4 gives us instead is a headache. It seems like every story these days is about nothing, has no stakes, and generally has no vision of morality. 
Disney hasn't put a bad guy in their movie since Toy Story 1 when Sid tried to send the toys on a rocket to the moon. Moana, for example, is about a nebulous malaise overtaking the world. Inside Out is about someone's emotions. Hell, the hero of Frozen is about a narcissistic loser who plunges the world into an icy apocalypse, leaves, then whines about how lonely she is. For some reason, writers these days refuse to write a story about good guys and bad guys, instead opting to make everything the same shade of relativistic taupe. It's lame, it's exhausting, and it's boring. To offer a critique of the larger culture, these pieces of content like Diablo 4 reflect that we're a cavalcade of cowards refusing to take a stand on anything. Politics are an ever-changing ebb and flow of people defending the goodness of their side primarily on aesthetics. It's like the worst form of centrism where instead of having a principled stand on any given position, you just float in the middle thinking that the average of something is always better than sticking to one thing or the other. This inevitably leads to the worst of both worlds, people lacking any cohesive vision of morality and instead floating along being beaten against the shore. Whether from the sword of Anarius or the horns of Lilith, either way, you're going down. When even a game like Diablo 4 can't decide whether the angels or demons are the bad guys, then how can we take a stand on anything? We're unmoored from our own existence, floating along wishy-washy at the whims of those with more power than us. The problem isn't that the powerful are more powerful per se, the problem is that we're all so caught between relativistic morality bullshit that we allow them to do with us what they want. Because we refuse to take a clear vision of ourselves, our values, and our futures, we're left drifting in a boat of currents we don't control. We've cut off the engine of our speedboat, and we wonder why we're just being tossed around the waves of the ocean. The truth is, it's precisely because we don't stand for anything that we've allowed the powerful to dick us around. We've removed our own agency from our lives by not believing in anything. The lack of clarity means we're all just groveling worms mindlessly squirming in the mud. It's impossible to blame the fishermen for plucking you out of the dirt to be sacrificed to the trout when you've been eating the shit casserole in the ground your whole life. Long story short, the Diablo 4 story sucks. It reflects the feckless, politically cucked mentality of the 21st century. Nobody in the story believes in anything, there's no point to anything, there are no good guys or bad guys, we're all just varying shades of grey. This philosophy makes no sense in the context of the game. The story reads like a therapy journal about mommy and daddy's divorce and it reflects how annoyingly disillusioned the entire world has become with everything in 2023. I'd also like to say screw the designers for the way they drew Lilith. She's a horned demon lady mother figure with a great rack, and she withholds her love from me in painful ways and I'm still kind of attracted to her. The degenerate therapy undertones of this game are endless. Freud is rolling in his grave. And as a final too long did not read, the Diablo 4 story sucks because our culture sucks. Pass it on.